Uh, okay, so next, this is an interesting one from Derek Mejia. Something's Shotzi. Hey, K100 crew, I just done, got done watching SmackDown. Again, they have Shotzi on TV winning a match against Chelsea Green. During the match, you can tell she was off her mark, missing spots, and just having a bad match again. If you watch Chelsea anywhere else, you know how good she is. I've seen people saying Chelsea isn't that good, but if you watch her anywhere else, you can see she's clearly one of the best right now. Shotzi, however, is really one of the worst in WWE, AW, or Impact Wrestling. I want to see if you guys notice just how bad she is and why you guys think she's still going over in WWE. The crowd is dead when she comes out. In the ring, she's horrible, in my opinion. The worst on TV. Thank you. And that's from D-Rock. Um, I don't really notice that. I, I, let me tell you something. Shotzi, Shotzi's work shouldn't look polished. She like she like comes out in a tank. You know, she got crazy hair. She kind of rough around the edges. <laughs> Her promos are like, you right. know, I, I mean, that's, you know. She's kind of got a, know, like I, a I, sexy tomboy look. Right, you know, and so, so and she's not like elegant like these other girls is smooth and stuff. I, I don't know, you know. I, I think she's fine. I, I've never, as it, I, I, don't, I look at her as a TV character. Like, I'll, like these girls aren't like Eddie Guerrero out there, you know. When I watch right. the women's matches, so it's not like I'm not looking for technical precision and stuff. And then just like, just wanted them to see if they can like just do the basics and who wins the match and what happens afterwards, you know. So that's I don't know. I, I think that's overly critical of Shotzi. What about you? Yeah, the first time I saw her, she was in this promotion that was from Oak Oakland called Hood Slam. And I don't even know if it if it's you know it exists anymore. But she was like a cheerleader and she had a cool name. It was something like Mrs. But they spelled it kind of like remember how they spelled just incredible in ECW? Yeah. You know, like if it was a normal name, but then when you said it fast, it meant something else. Mm -hmm. So her name was like, and I thought, bro, she's green, but wow, does she have a lot of personality? You know, I think she has a lot of potential. They gave her a new look and a character, but, but not a good storyline. The only thing that they did was damage control, cut her hair, you know. Well, she cut her own it. hair. She oh, cut her own hair. I thought she, they cut her hair first. Oh, yeah, yeah. then she cut, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. They did cut her hair. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Um, but bro, she's super salvageable. She lost a lot of weight, which I don't think she needed to, but I think she, she has a lot of potential. Hood Slam, Hood Slam still runs. I just looked it up. All right. They had, they had a show a couple weeks ago. Next one's from Anthony Hunt. So this question for Disco and Conan. We're going to give a yellow card to Anthony Hunt because he spells Conan C-O-N-A-N. <laughs> uh, K100 crew. Hey crew, love all you. Did you write that down, Joe? Yeah, I'm yellow doing it right My question, uh, constantly, hey crew, I love... Love all you do. Want to give props to Disco's Braves. Consistently good year in and year out. My question for Disco. Do you think the Phillies invest too much in home run hitters and underestimated the Diamondbacks? For Conan, is there a heel turn coming for LWO? I hope not Santos and Ray. I hope not Santos and Ray have great chemistry. What a genius move putting the U.S. title on Ray. AW should edge the way we use Ray Mysterio. Thanks, guys. Anthony Hunt. Um, no, nobody should. Bro, the, the teams with all the home run hitters are going to the playoffs. The thing is, it's to get you. I mean, the, it's it's just whichever pitcher out there is not giving up home runs in the playoffs. It seems like, and that's like are the, are the ones that are doing good. It's all well, in, in a league of hitters and home run hitters now, and the playoffs is filled with them. It's it's the the pitchers are the ones that are having to like carry carry the weight, you know, which which seems to happen all the time like that. So, um, Conan, is there a heel turn coming for LWO? Yeah, I, like I think so. Burn. Look, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, first of all, Ray doesn't need a faction. Obviously, he gave it credibility, but they've treated that faction like JoJo's. I think it'll be a good way to make Santana leader and make him a strong heel against Ray. Whatever they do, I'm just wondering where Carlito will fit in in all of this. Yeah, yeah and I'd like to point out that, that Anthony Hunt has gotten a yellow card here and there. You know, he's he's lipped off to Disco a little bit, so I think that – good job for the Braves this year thing was a little bit of kissing up to disco. And I would have recommended a yellow card for the, for the kissing up. <laughs> yeah. He's going to jerk. Uh, next is from Trevor Clark. Subject is WrestleMania moment. Hi, K100 crew. What's your favorite WrestleMania, WrestleMania moment of all time? What's your favorite faction of all time? Thanks for taking the time out of your busy weeks to entertain the masses and keep on keeping it one thou well. That's from Trevor from Newcastle, Ontario. My favorite WrestleMania moment was when Brock Lesnar beat the undertaker. Cause I was shocked. Yeah, that was, that was something. Um, and my favorite faction of all time, I would have to say, is it's between the Horsemen and Generation X because the Generation X has has a great re-entrance and a great song. Um, what about you, K100 
Conan. What's your faction, Joe? The NWO, and, yeah, NWO, uh, Ravens, Nest, and ECW, and ECW's uh, Triple Threat too. I know Disco will get a kick out of that. Oh my god, those are your really? those are your favorite all... factions of all time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, you know what? I, I got into the, no, no, I got into the just... favorite faction, <laughs> Natural Born Thrillers. And, yeah. And and what and a mark! The filthy yeah. animals. I got yeah. into the. <laughs> show. What about the Gee, mine was 100 percent. Mine was the Horseman, the original yeah. NWO before they added everybody in, including me. The Wolfpack, DX, very biased on this, but LAX and the and the Filthy Animals. Do, and do my favorite, God, I'm sorry. Just WrestleMania moment yeah. stands. This I don't. Uh, maybe if Dominic were to do something. But, but right now, it's Eddie and Chris winning the title with the family there. Eddie jumping into the crowd with his mom and his brother Mondo, who looks like Cheech from Cheech and Chong. All the confetti flying down while they hug. I never, ever expected to see that. I would one day really love to hear the backstory from Paul Lee, Bruce, or Hunter, or even Vince, how they decided to do that. Yeah, and I would say uh, Brett Austin, Hogan Rock. Brian uh, at 30 winning the belt after beating uh, Triple H and then and then Orton and Batista and then recently Austin and Owens was awesome too you know so next is from Jerome Jones sub to AEW's factions Conan Disco notice AEW's factions lack longevity and dominance constant shuffling of members doesn't help either now Conan your Latin American exchange faction is easily one of the best factions in the history of wrestling can you tell us what all you did to make LAX such a fantastic faction? What advice would you give to AEW to develop better factions? Some Jerome Jones. Um, well, the, the the main thing about these these the the, the one thing that the that the the storylines that they do very well in AEW is that all of the factions are always trying to recruit members. But when they get all their members, they never really act like a faction. Like they don't go out there together. Some guys go out there by himself again. It's kind of weird. Like, you know, they and the worst part is fight. half of them don't have chemistry. <laughs> right. You know, they're like random guys put together to form a faction. Like, you know, whatever. Uh, how did you make well, LAX such a fantastic faction, Conan? Well, the first iteration, which was me and Hernandez, the only guy that ever really joined was a, a commentator called Moody Jack when we had our own separate commentating table like the spanish uh, commentating table with with tony and uh, with um tenay and 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 um what was the other guy's name don, don west. west yeah and the, and then we had the latino nation which i basically used them when i needed backup because you know there's always a ton of wrestlers backstage looking for work so in orlando there's a lot of latinos and what we did is we did vignettes to establish characters we did in-rings for that connection with the crowd. And our matches had a street element to it, from our swag to the way we dress to the names of some of the moves, Gringo, Killer, Border Trust, you know. Um, and our second iteration, which was Santana and Ortiz, and then I wanted to get a girl, so we got Diamante, and she got hurt. Um, and for a while, we had, um, what's this guy's name? Um, homicide and low-key with us but we did the same thing as the first time vignettes good angles good people to work with i mean the first time we worked with the dudleys and we worked with chris daniels and aj styles so those matches were great you know in the ring and on the mic and then when i was with santana and ortiz we worked with the lucha brothers we worked with sammy callahan and his crew you know and uh then we worked with the ogs which was kingston and the original LAX. So good people to work with. That helps. And that was actually Sanjay's idea to work with them, you know. Yeah. And shout out to our boy Jeremy Borash, who was a big number. part of that. Yeah, that was yeah. a good yeah. And we actually went with which was one of my favorite things we ever did. We actually went to a strip club. Jeremy was like, they're not gonna let us film in here. And I go, oh, they'll let us film in here. And they let us film in there. And his boy Jimmy Dean, who works with him in WWE got on stage and was filling the stripper while I was sitting back and some stripper was grabbing Ortiz's and it was, bro, we had a great time. Shouts out to my boy, Jeremy Borish. Nice. Next is from um, Heath N. Uh, Subject is any chance we'll see K-Dog back in a manager style role like his LAX impact role. 
Hey guys, quick shout out to Disco and Conan again. Long time listener, my third question sent all time. My question for Conan is, will we be seeing him in a manager style role again in TNA, AW, even WWE someday? To me, Conan is one of the best all time on the stick. Good examples is back and forth with Steiner 2018. You couldn't tear up a chicken at a luau. Thanks for listening. Um, all right, Conan, we're going to see you in a manager role someday. I'm always open to anything except I have to be like creatively inspired because it's not about money anymore. You know, if it's something I like, I'll do it. 